Dicer orchids are some of the world's most miraculous, but also known for being incredibly difficult and tricky to grow. But what if I told you that didn't quite have to be the case? Today, I'll take you through the process of going from small flask plants and growing them out into beautiful flowering specimens like this one before you. Come with me and I'll show you how. So before we start, let's get some background on Dicer orchids. They're a group of plus minus 200 terrestrial orchids, mostly found in Africa. Evergreen dices are the easiest group of those to cultivate and are generally comprised of a group of six species. Dicer uniflora, Dicer tripetaloides, Dicer cardinalis, Dicer coalescens, Dicer aurata, and Dicer racemosa. Uniflora and tripetaloides are the most commonly grown and hybridized, although all the, all the other species have also been included in hybrids in the past, though some are regarded as more difficult to grow or just hard to find, such as coalescens and cardinalis. Dicer uniflora here, the feature of this video, has the largest flowers in the Dicer genus and grows naturally in the Cape Mountains of South Africa in semi-shade to sun on stream banks, seeps, and waterfall areas. It's often found in moss or peat as a substrate. Cold, soft water full of tannic acids and devoid of minerals often flows over their roots, keeping them cool and free of nutrients all the time. They grow as a rosette of green, linear leaves with tubers under the soil, and they use stolons for vegetative reproduction. Flowering occurs now in late February, late in summer, with one to three beautiful blooms and are pollinated by the mountain pride butterfly Aeropetes tolbachia. The name uniflora is a bit of a misnomer as they often have more than one flower. Uni means one, flora means flower. It's a bit of a strange one from the taxonomist there. So, as I mentioned, the easiest way to get some dices going if you're unable to get mature plants is from a flask. This is a tissue culture flask, so plants started from seeds and sterile tissue culture medium. These are nice and healthy now, quite big. It's important to make sure you get a fresh flask. If they sit in the medium for too long, they go through all the nutrients and the growth slows down quite significantly. They're not as healthy and don't harden as well. This is a nice pot. Um, it's Dicer uniflora helmet mayer, cross table mountain, bred by Duckett's orchid nursery in Darling. The other things you need is a pot and substrate, of course. This is sphagnum moss and perlite. Clean substrate is fairly important, it also, also should be airy and retain some water, but also be acidic. Sphagnum moss is perfect for that, has antifungal, antibacterial properties, as microbes are usually your biggest enemy during the defasting process. You also need some sort of sprayer and a tub for rinsing your flasks or your flask plants in. To start, take your flasks of plants and open it up. Have a good look at them, these are nice and healthy and quite green. So, so at the bottom here is an agon nutrient gel with charcoal in. It's unfortunately got a little bit of mold in, which is why this flask was selected for picking them out. We can gently start to pry plants out. So here we have a single plant, agar, very nice healthy roots, very fuzzy. That's what you're looking for. You take your plant, you must make sure to wash off as much of the agar as possible. Microbes grow very well on it, and once you take it out of the sterile environment, they can take over and kill the plant. Uh, as you can see, the majority of the agar is off. You can pick off some pieces by hand as well. You can pick off dead pieces of root as they rot quite easily too. Dead leaves, etc. Don't worry too much about it since they're going to start plenty of new growth. So there's one healthy plant. We'll do the rest and then we'll get to planting. So here we have 17 nicely deflasked and rinsed plants. At this point, you can use a fungicide soak if you wish. Some people use that to help prevent rot and so on. It's not something I've really had issues with, so I don't do it. But a 15 minute soak with a systemic fungicide is usually quite helpful at this point. So I'm going to take some of my larger plants. So this is probably the biggest one of the bunch. I'm going to pot them up. I usually just pot the biggest ones together. So I make a nice little hole in my substrate and pack around them nicely around the roots, so roots are still quite small and sensitive to drying out, so make sure to pack them well. Take a second, second one, pack them in there. Number three, and I'll do a fourth one for fun. Now, once they're in there, give them a good water. 
You want it to be moist but not absolutely sopping. It's part of why I like sphagnum moss. If there's still a bit exposed, take a bit more substrate. Just pack it around the plant, but loosely. If you overpack it, it can become quite anaerobic around the roots. And that is usually an invitation for mold, fungi, and bacteria to start growing, which these dices are very sensitive to. So from there, I'll pot up the rest of these and we'll get them into the humidity dome. So now we have three pots of beautiful little healthy dicer seedlings, all potted up in the nice loose mix of sphagnum moss and perlite. I'm just going to stick them down here in the humidity dome. If you do not own a humidity dome, a plastic bag, a plastic crate, pretty much anything will work for this initial step. And seal them up. The first two weeks or so, keep the humidity at 100% and then you slowly start opening it up. That is because in the jars, they add up 100% humidity and they don't really have any outer layer on the leaves and they wilt and dry out very easily. So now that you've planted them out, you have to acclimate them and harden them into real life conditions. After two weeks, I'll start opening them up a little bit. After about four to six weeks, they should be fully hardened. When you see lots of new vigorous growth coming out, that's when they're ready to plant out. Something I neglected to mention now is the best season for deflasking. Typically, the dices have active growth in late summer, just after they finish flowering, and in spring. I would avoid deflasking them in summer at the peak of the heat, or in the winter when it's too cold, both of those will typically lead them to wilt or rot quite quickly. These are all my older plants, deflasked in April 2023, with the first flowering occurring now, and some flowering sized plants that are dotted among them. The big question is always substrate. At the moment, mine are in sphagnum moss with perlite. I've also grown them in sphagnum peat with perlite in the past. But basically anything airy, acidic, low nutrients and water retentive will work. I've seen people grow them in pure sand and a mix of sand and peat and perlite. I've seen them even grown just basically in plastic mats so long as they're kept wet. As for lighting, they like to be bright but not in direct sun. Here, They've got 70% shade net above them and 40% at the back. So they get bright light through the day, morning, middle of the day, and late afternoon sun. And they seem to be quite happy with this. They don't like being in direct sun. I see a lot of people grow them on the floor next to their benches, so it's still quite bright, but they're not getting the full brunt of the sun during the day. In the Northern Hemisphere, in Europe, they're generally not as sensitive. If you're in South Africa or in Mediterranean climates, the sun can really fry them in the summertime. As for watering, I keep them in a tray with some iconoverous plants, as you can see here. As it empties, I'll usually fill it again the following day with two or three centimeters of clean water. In the Cape, in South Africa, you can use tap water, so it's very low in minerals. Elsewhere in the world, if you have a lot of calcium or carbonates in your water, I would recommend using rainwater or reverse osmosis water, as this is free of minerals that could burn the roots. You can also top water them, or a lot of people do flow through systems where they use cool water continuously flowing through the plants or periodically that helps keep the root zone cool because that's the critical part of growing these plants. They don't mind getting hot, it gets very hot up in the mountains where they grow, but their root zone is always cooled by the chilled mountain water running through them or the fogs that come through. Repotting is best done annually. At the end of every summer the plants start making new tubers and new shoots and the previous season's tuber dies off and start, can start decomposing. If you leave them in a pot for too long, too many of those tubers can build up and all the decomposition can invite a lot of microbes, which can then harm the plants. It's best done in late summer, as often as plant has finished flowering, it's gonna start making its new daughter shoots. I started with about 20 of these and ended up with 40 in a year and a half, so they multiply quite readily. Fertilizing, I do weekly, a week fertilizer solution every two weeks in the summertime including some chemical fertilizers and organic, organic fertilizers. So I use a normal orchid vegetative growth, a fish emulsion based fertilizer, and a carcass meal based fertilizer. I spray, give them a light spray over the surface as they don't like getting too much nutrients, but it really helps bolster their growth. 
the biggest problem you get when growing dices is aphids. These little suckers really, really love dices. There's a fat, juicy little one there. They get all around in your new growth. You can see it when the leaves start getting a little misshapen, a little damaged on the surface. Sometimes it's browning, which may also be from nutrient deficiency as they're coming into the new growth here. Spray them with whatever fungus or insecticide you're using. I use Rose Care 3 in South Africa, or you can simply rub them off by hand. Works quite well, but if they're in all the nooks and crannies, so insecticide is a good way to get rid of them. Unfortunately, in my flower, they were inside the bud as was forming, and I ended up with these curled tips. And a very nice specimen, the tips are pointed outwards. So maybe the next one will be a little better. Fungus can also be a problem, Phytophthora and also bacterial infections, which is why it's important to use clean water, clean substrate, and don't let them get stagnant in the trays. That's why I let them dry out for a day or so between watering to really help the substrate get some air in it. And they've been rewarding me very well with vigorous growth and flowering just a bit under two years from flasking. I know you can get it down to a year if you grow them really well. The other last elephant in the room is temperatures. Here in the Cape, it's very warm. It's about 33 degrees Celsius today. I'll annotate the freedom units into the video, but so long as the root zone stays cool, they don't mind. But if you really want your dices to grow well, grow them in front of a wet wall, hang them in sphagnum bags, various other ways to keep them much cooler with evaporative cooling, and they'll be very happy. So that is an introduction into a very simple, my simple method methods of growing dices. You can get more complicated than this and get very well rewarded, but so far this fairly simple way of doing it has worked for me. The plants are growing, they're re reasonably happy, and hopefully yours are too. Thanks for watching.